Hello and welcome to Mooface Designs. In this video, I'm just documenting my very first portrait. I'm well out of my comfort zone and it's been really challenging. I'm happy with the clothing, so I'll show you that. And I am confident that it's a very good likeness of my in-laws. The only thing is, I'm not happy with the value. You can see the darkened lights and that's how come we've got a good likeness, but I decided to start here. So with my mother-in-law, obviously she's got quite a lot of um, one colour on this part of her face. And I started with two lighter value, which meant, yes, I've still got the darks in the right places, but I think both of them are looking a little bit washed out. It's going to be a gift from my mother-in-law. Unfortunately, my father-in-law passed away at the beginning of the year, so I'm not happy to give it as a gift when, to me, it's not quite right. So I've got two choices, really. I can either completely take all of this off and redo that, or perhaps start with the darker colour first and work backwards to the lighter one. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wash over the top of this particular colour. I've been messing about with ink tents pencils and some fabric medium and as you can see here this is the same fabric the faces are, are made up predominantly of and you can see all my different pests and initially I thought these colours were quite nice that one I've had trouble to replicate again but I think I've almost got it with that one which is the one that I'm going to go with and some of them I thought were quite good. And I thought that looks quite a nice colour. I actually do that on there. That will completely ruin it. So I've gone for this colour. And it's, it's still fairly light. But it is just a couple of shades darker than this one. I can always add on top. So I just thought the best thing to do is have a go with this. <laughs> see what happens because like I said I've got nothing to lose because I'm not actually happy to give it as a gift yet. Okay so here it is it's not an awful lot hopefully that'll be enough. I've taken into consideration that there is a peachy undertone as well so let's get cracking. I think it just looks a bit darker when you very first put it on and the good thing is about the fabric medium is that it doesn't run into other colours so I'm just going to be as quick as I can. Just get this on. I haven't done this before either so this is another completely new thing to me. <laughs> So. I'm trying to make sure that there's no brush marks in it and that it's all fairly even. It might even come unstuck from the paper that I've got behind it. That bit's running down there. Gotta draw a bit on your chin, lady. I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> You've got to laugh, haven't you? If it doesn't turn out, I, there's no point in sitting and crying over it. I'll just have to crack on and cut it all off and start again. My pattern's still underneath and it's still all in the same place as it should be. So it's all pinned and everything. So my my pattern hasn't moved. So it'll all still line up if I have to redo it. Um, make sure I've got everything. That bit there seems to be resisting a little bit. Not sure why. Oh, there we go. Now, I'm not so sure whether I need to go over these bits as well. I think I might. I think I might because... Um, and it'll all be darkened down to the same amount, won't it? Um, I won't do the whites of the eyes. So all I can do with that now is wait. It does look a bit darker than that one, but I think it will dry a little bit lighter. I'm still not convinced that I need to go over these ones to make those darker because 
I don't want to take that too much closer to that. I like the idea that um, how I had the shadows of the dark and the light. So I'm just wondering whether I need to go over that as well. I think what I might do is I might just leave that for the moment, see what it dries like. And then it might well be that I'll have to go over the top of those as well. I've got a little bit left. Just wondering whether I'll have enough to do my father-in-law's face. Didn't really take a lot, did it? And I'm also worried that I might run out halfway through. I think we'll just go for it. Like I said, we've got nothing to lose, have we? And apparently this medium is supposed to stop it bleeding. It is bleeding in a little bit into the things around it. Mind you, I have mixed it with a little bit of water. It's flowing nicely though. It's not, you know, it's flowing nicely over the fabric. There will be things that I can do once I come and do my thread painting on it. But again, I've never done faces. So again, <laughs> I'm quite comfortable doing animals. I know exactly how to do an animal and their fur and everything else. But, you know, how do I how do I do the face? Want to get a bit low of it, but I think I've still got enough just to do this. Last little bit, hopefully, I've got enough. We can make it stretch. If you're finding my videos useful um, and you're enjoying watching, hopefully <laughs> this won't turn out to be a disaster, please do subscribe to my channel. That would be really helpful. Uh, and if you press the bell button, you'll get notifications when I upload another video. I do them on very regular occasions, um, but I don't do them on certain days of the week. It just when I've got time and if there's something pressing that I think I need to let you know about, especially if I'm working on that particular thing at that time. <laughs> Phew, that was, uh, that was close. I've managed to do all of it. So I think that's looking a little bit better already, luckily. So I'm feeling a little bit relieved now. I just wait and see what happens when it dries. Um, I've mixed up some pink. You can't really see it very well. It looks really quite pink, but I've just done a bit of an experiment on this colour here. And I did it on a dry piece. There we go. There it is. So that is the pink I've put on the top. And if you look at the photograph, you can see there's um, a little bit of colour there in the cheeks. So while this is still wet, I'm going to go for it and try and put a little bit of pink on it just to give a little bit of colour to the cheek. So it's just kind of here. I'm just going to put all that on there like that and then because it's still wet I've got a little tiny bit of medium on my brush um, and I'm just going to sort of like blend the edges in. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm completely groping in the dark here. I'm hoping that this is going to work. It has given it a little bit of colour hasn't it? Ordinarily I just like to use fabric for my colours I don't generally like to use any of this, but I don't feel I've got any choice. And if I can make it better, then, you know, there's no rules, are there? I think we all just need to believe in ourselves a little bit sometimes. And um, as long as you like it, does it really matter what anyone else thinks? It's probably got some on that cheek as well, but until it's dry, we can't really tell. So I've mixed up some more of the colour. Well, <laughs> it's very similar. Um, I'm not saying exactly the same because um, I can't remember what I put in it. It is very similar. Um, and what I've decided to do is to go over these ones as well, because I think now that does look too much lighter. I'm going to go over the rest of the stuff that I haven't put any colour on at the moment 
put that on. Oh, <laughs> we've lost a piece down here. I can put that back on afterwards. So yeah, let's just go with that as well. I'm not sure whether I haven't put quite as much medium in this or whoops or because it's a different fabric but it doesn't seem to be going on quite as easily as the other bit did <laughs> I bet there'll be some artists watching me that would be covering their eyes up going oh my god what is she doing That's making the white on that fabric stand out a whole lot more. That wasn't my intention. I kind of thought that if I just added the wash over the whole lot of it, It'll just darken it all down a little bit and then they wouldn't look so washed out. This bit here is looking a bit odd. Well, we can do no more now. We can just wait until it's dry. I've definitely got that piece of fabric in the right place. I think it just needs a little bit more of a help. And what I'm going to do is go into that other piece as well, just a little bit. That looks really heavy at the minute. And I just need to do some massive amount of blending here. I think my problem was yesterday I was terrified of putting too much colour on so I didn't put enough on. But I did this a few times. I'll probably get a bit more confident at it. Which would make it easier I think. It's just learning what each thing does. I said to you yesterday when I put the um, stuff on this particular piece of fabric in the past, it's made the white stand out more, but I think it does disappear again into the background a little bit more once it's dried. And we have got a bit more of a thing there, but it's more brown. It's more like that now. A bit of water first. It really does make a line, doesn't it? It's just, oh, let's not go too overboard. It might not make a lot of difference, but it might just be enough that it'll just lift so you're not looking at one complete flat colour. This is medium that I'm putting on here now. I'm kind of really quiet because I'm trying to concentrate. Bit. 
this has got loads of in with it, so when I mixed it. So in theory, it should blend easier because it's wet. <laughs> Yesterday, um, when I said I had to wait for it, I got a bit impatient and I got the um, hairdryer out and I started blow drying it and it all came away from here. So it was all sort of floppy and um, <laughs> it blew away those pieces here that I had. But actually now they've gone, I think I'm a little bit happy without them. So I'll keep messing about and playing and adding and adding and then um, you can see what it's like when I finish. OK, so experiment over. I did use more intense pencils when I finished speaking to you. Not only did I mix up um, a couple of colours and add the fabric medium and apply it in a wash. The other way I did it as well was to add just directly to the fabric the intense pencils. And some of them are, you know, are very light. Other pieces, I added a little bit more and then I used my finger to smudge it to get kind of shadows and just to make it blend a little bit better. That hasn't been heat set yet. It will be heat set with the iron when I come to do that shortly. I got a bit happy with, <laughs> with the intense pencils. Um, I've drawn on a little bit more detail here um, on the jacket and stuff. But as I said, I think... Once I come to do the thread painting, the garments will look good. The hair will have a little bit more detail. And then, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll thread paint the faces. Slightly different with faces, I think. It might well be that I will stitch the pieces of fabric down. I'm still in an absolute quandary about it. I wouldn't normally do that, but I think um, as long as I match up my colours pretty well, hopefully you won't see that. And... I think that will probably look a little bit better than, for me, contour thread painting, especially as um, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> maybe a, maybe contour thread painting will come later down the line when I've done a few more. The next time you will see this will be all ready to thread paint. So as you can see, now I've taken my collage off the parchment paper and now it is secured to the background fabric. Funny story though, um, I had set it to a different background fabric and I was really pleased with it. Uh, the silly thing was though, I'd stuck it on upside down. So I cut around my collage just down as far as here and then fed in another piece of fabric. The fabric that was upside down is still here at the bottom and the reason I've left this is because um, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I was really upset. I cut it out hoping to find another piece of fabric like this, turn it round the right way and then the background will be back to how it should be. But unfortunately the piece of fabric that I had wasn't quite big enough to do the piece that I needed and this particular red piece here wasn't big enough to do the whole thing either so I was left to do half and half. You won't see it at all once it is stretched round my canvas. So I thought the first thing to do would be to thread paint the jumper. I've got the blue in my bobbin. Um, it's very similar to one of these colours. I'm not going to change the three different colour bobbins, I'm just going to use a blue. Uh, and then when I come to do the hair and um, a few other things, I'm going to use whites and greys for that. Uh, maybe, maybe a few yellows. I don't know. I need to um, look at the subject again. So I've started off by doing this green piece here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch, not really densely, but I am going to stitch quite a lot in the green pieces. When it comes to the blue pieces, I don't think I'm going to stitch quite so much because the green pieces are in the folds. It's just going to give the fabric a little bit of movement instead of just looking like it's all just been sewn down around the edges. 
Right, let's get cracking. Ooh, that one away with me a little bit. Um, I'm mostly used to doing animals, so um, garments are a little bit more tricky really or no not necessarily tricky but just something that I'm not used to doing so I can't really do it in the direction of the way the fur grows because <laughs> there isn't any so what I'm going to do is I am going to go around the edges which is what I don't want to do really but I'm going to go around the edges first and then I'm just going to kind of fill in the shape so when you look at it, it'll just echo the shape over and over and over again. I've got my machine set so that um, if I've got my foot hard on the um, pedal, it won't go any faster. That just means it won't run away with me. I can control it a little bit better. So I've gone all round the shape once, so I'm not going to keep going round and round the shape. I'm going to pick out a piece and do that bit first. So we'll do this bit first. So follow the same line that I've just done down that piece. And then come up and just... And then as I come down this bit, I'm going to go down here a little bit, just to there, and then I'm going to go back again. And then straight back down again, down the curvy bit, and then one more time. Join it into another piece of stitching line. I suppose really what I'm trying to do is make it look like um, it's got some interest instead of looking at it and just going, oh yes, that's been sewn around the edges. So that's all the um, green done on the, on the jumper. Um, I'm just going to think I'm going to do the blue now, the dark blue. I can then decide what I'm going to do with the vast amounts of the other blue. I just want to get that done first. So that's the navy blue done as well. So all I've got left to do on the jumper now is this blue. I think what I'm going to do now is just carry on with my thread painting. You've probably seen enough. Okay, so all finished now. This is thread painted, it's stretched onto the canvas. And we'll talk a little bit about my thread painting. I said to you that I was going to do relatively dense thread painting in all the pieces that were the creases. It isn't too dense, but it, it's enough to give it a bit of texture and a bit of interest. What I did do with the vast amounts of the other blue, which make up the majority of the jumper, was the fabric, I think, is doing a lot of the work. So I just thought the best thing to do with that is just to go around the edges and pin that bit down. And then we move up to the collar where I've done a little bit more thread painting again and the glasses and things. But the actual face is minimal that's the way i decided i wanted to do it and again same for my mother-in-law's case minimal thread painting on that but i did put quite a lot of detail into the hair off the top of my head 
I think that's made up of four different coloured threads. Again, the jacket didn't really have a lot of thread painting on it, but then I did quite a bit on the scarf. I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out now. I think it is a very good likeness of my in-laws. That's the photograph I was using. Um, I'll show you the back of it. So I'll turn it over. And you can see where the other fabric was at the bottom. I knew that you wouldn't be able to see it because obviously the rest of the collage folds around the frame. You can see a little bit of it here and there's a little tiny bit here. So that is the only piece really that is showing. I think when it's hung up on the wall, you probably might still see that. You can still see that it's upside down. And what I could do is I could take some red and I could cover it over. But I don't think I'm going to do that. It, it was a mistake that I made. It was a good job that I spotted it. I don't think it's a good idea always to cover up your mistakes. That means as you move on in your journey through your collaging, obviously things are going to improve. So it's always good to look back on something and go, have a little bit of a laugh and go, oh yes, I remember doing that. Also, if you're not happy with how your collage sits on the back and you're not happy with how it looks, you could probably pick up yourself either a ribbon and attach it all the way round or you could take a piece of fabric and you could fold it over so you so it looks a bit like a bias binding and then you could just put it over the edges as well that would tidy it all up so there we go um, i'm glad you've come on the journey with me it's been good fun one thing i can say is i've learned an awful lot about this and i've learned an awful lot about intense pencils <laughs> Thank you for spending time with me. It's been good to spend time with you. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.